The growing and production of sugars have had a lasting effect on the world, tracing back to approximately 8,000 BC. It gradually spread around the Eastern Pacific and Indian Oceans. Around 3,500 years ago, sugar was frequently stored in vaults because of its high value. So how is it made? 80% of the total sugar produced is made from sugar cane, with the remaining portion coming from sugar beets. The process begins with the selection of suitable land for cultivation. The land should have good drainage, access to water, and fertile soil. In the case of sugarcane, it is primarily propagated through stem cuttings called set. On average, it takes the sugarcane plant 12 to 16 months to reach maturation. Once it does, it's time for harvesting season. The stalks of sugarcane are cut into short pieces, and the leafy tops are removed by mechanized harvesters that travel along the fields of cane. These short pieces, also called billets, are collected in bins pulled alongside the harvester. Once the bins are full, they are transported to the sugar factory by road or railway. The gathered plant materials are regularly scythed to remove any dirt and pebbles. Upon arrival at the factory, the sugar cane undergoes a thorough cleaning procedure to remove impurities. This cleaning process often involves washing in water-filled flues or on belts sprinkled with water. The sugar cane is crushed using swing hammer crushers or rollers with deep grooves. This crushing process helps to extract the juice from the cane. The dried pulp left behind after the juice has been extracted is not wasted and instead can be burnt as fuel. The crushed sugar cane is then sprinkled with hot water to prepare it for extraction. The hot water bath expands the plant cells, making extraction easier. The extraction of juice from the crushed sugar cane involves milling. The crushed cane passes through a series of five or more mills, where large cylinders compress the cane fibers, extracting as much juice as possible. The juice obtained is dark green and acidic in texture. After milling, the juice is collected and transported to vessels at the factory. Samples of the juice undergo testing in the sugar mill's laboratory, where impurities are removed using a thickener, and the juice is filtered to make it clear and clean. This is done for a variety of purposes. It not only ensures consistent quality, but helps optimize processing, determines sugar yield, sets fair prices, meets regulations, and aids in scientific research and development. The concentration of sugar in the juice is measured using a parameter machine. The clarified juice then flows through a 10-meter high tower, where sulfur dioxide vapors rise through it in a process known as sulfurtation, bleaching the juice. Lime solution is added to regulate the juice's pH level, and the mixture is agitated for about six hours in a process called alkylation. The juice, now clarified and yellow in color, is transferred to clarifier tanks, where impurities settle to the bottom as sludge. The residue, known as mud, is filtered out for further processing. Next, the juice goes into these clarifier tanks. It takes over two hours for the juice to settle and for the impurities to fall to the bottom of the tank. A sample taken from the tank shows how the sludge collects at the bottom while the clarified juice collects at the top. There's still quite a way to go before it's transformed into the stuff that goes into your tea. Workers filter the residue known as mud, from the clarifier tanks to extract any remaining sugar. The clarified juice is boiled in vacuum evaporators until it reaches a sugar content of 50% to 65%. Paddle skimmers are used to remove sediment, creating a thick sugar syrup. The syrup is then evaporated in a vacuum pan until it's loaded with sugar crystals, a process known as crystallization. The syrup with sugar crystals, called massaquite, is then subjected to centrifugation. In this process, the massaquite is spun at high speed in a centrifuge, separating the sugar crystals from the molasses. The sugar crystals are washed with water to remove any remaining syrup. The washed sugar crystals are then dried using hot air dryers until they reach a water content of about 0.02%. The standard for table sugar, the dry sugar crystals are then poured out of the dryer and into a bag that can store 1,000 kilos. A hoist then carries the bags to a packing facility. The hoist can carry three bags at a time, which equates to 3,000 kilos. 
Talk about a heavy load. It lowers each bag into a chute that leads to the factory's main floor. Workers carefully open each bag in turn and pour out the sugar into the chute. The chute feeds into an automated packaging machine that fills a series of two kilos of plastic bags. Maintaining mill sanitization is a critical aspect of quality control measures. Sugar is a useful and important food ingredient with many properties. It not only imparts sweetness and adds flavor to food, but it also gives it scent, color, texture, and a longer shelf life. If you would want to know how car body parts are manufactured, click on the video on the screen.